holy, completely, totally. We live in a time when the world says, if it feels good, you do it. We must know that we are not part of this world. Jesus said it very clearly in John 17. He says, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. That is if you are born of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God has its principles. It's not the same as the world. We cannot do things that we like to do if it displeases God, if it's contrary to the word of God. We cannot set about to please ourselves. Ours is to please God. And if we please God, we will be pleased by the blessings of God. I'm not the preacher this morning, but I don't know why I'm saying all these things. But I believe I'm moved by the Spirit of God and I'm saying it so that those of us who still continue to do things that we know to be wrong in the eyes of God and we feel that we can justify it we feel that we can change God's word, change God himself, to make God like us. Well, we have it wrong. Jesus Christ came and he gave his life so that we can become the image of him, not he becoming the image of us. And so, Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your manservant who hurried all the way from Barbados to come to minister to us this morning. I pray that your spirit will move upon him so that as he speaks, Lord, he will speak with the unction and power of the Holy Spirit of God and that our lives will turn more and more and more, be more inclined to being like Jesus in every aspect of our lives. I ask that such an anointing be upon him in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. How many of you are here for the very first time with us this morning? Any visitors with us this morning? I know we are few in number because of the vacation. We have your hand, I can't see. Okay, we have one or two or three or four. Good. Five. So why don't you just stand so that we can see your faces and extend the hand of welcome to you. We love to have our visitors with us, so come. There we go, there we go. In the balcony, under the balcony. God bless you richly. We're glad to have you with us. And saints of God, you're always welcome to be here with us. But this morning, as I indicated, we have our brother, Brother Cleveland, those of you who have joined us within recent times, Brother Cleveland is a member of the Board of Directors. He's also a member of this congregation from way back in South Key. He has um, a prophetic anointing on him. And within recent times, after all the years he sat there in the pews, he would not tell me that um, you know he can preach the word of God. He would just prophesy down there. But within recent times, he's up here now to preach the word of God. So he came in from Barbados, and uh, let's put our hands together and welcome him. Thank you. Oh, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Um, Pam, I need your help at this beginning, yes? Why don't you help me? Thank you so much. If you could just come and, you know that song, Glorify Your Name? It's beautiful. It helps tremendously. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. 
Amen. Amen to that. Oh, the Lord is good. He is excellent. He is beautiful. He is wonderful. There is no God like our God. From the beginning of time, this day, and throughout eternity, there is none like him. Do you agree? You sure about that? The beauty of the Lord that we serve, it's not Muhammad. It's not Buddha. It's not any kind of Krishna. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not talking about a Lord based on hearsay. We are not talking about a Lord based on views and opinions. We are talking about a Lord that lives, who knows you, who has your address, who loves you, who is real. He is not made by the hands of man. He is not made by anything. No stick, no concrete. No bush, no mortar, no water. He is, I am, that I am, that I am, that I am. He is the Almighty God. He is the Great One, the Holy One of Israel. He is the Blessed One, the One we call our Lord, our Savior. We shall worship Him. When we rise in the morning, we shall worship Him. We shall testify of the love of the Lord. And we will never, ever stop doing that. Because He is our God. Oh, how good it is to love the Lord and to worship Him. Oh God, I ask you this morning, just as the prayer has been lifted, give me that which is necessary so that your name be glorified. I ask that you kill everything that is inside of me that is not of you. Give life to your word. That the preciousness of your love and who you are be revealed to your servant for this is your heartbeat that we might know you that we might know you oh Lord just glorify your name love your people we know that you love us but we ask this hour and this time for our love and the peace that is sufficient even for one moment even for one second. Just make the difference. Just for your name's sake. Not because of anything we have done or can do or will do. But for your name's sake. Oh Lord, energize your word. Magnify your word. Make it precious. Make it holy. Not just in words, but let it be real. Let it be real to us in every wonderful way. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. It's wonderful to be here. I don't know how it's going to flow because, you know, prophetically how it works. Like, um, I was looking around. I was expecting somebody to be here singing. And my eyes were was, um, just through the audience. And then I saw her there, right? So the young lady there in the second. Now, in the prophetic, what happened is that I will ask your name 10,000 times. Yes? And I don't even know your name right now. So work with me. The young lady there. Right? Could you stand? Yes? For instance, before coming here, the Lord put you before me. I have last night, this morning, don't understand why. He didn't say anything to me, but I looked around for you. And then the way the word of the Spirit of the Lord moves is that he wants you to know he knows you. And he wants you, why don't you come a second? Yes? Some years ago when I joined a church, I sat somewhere there and there was a guy who was called a prophet and he spoke the word and never knew anything called prophetic and the ministry and so forth and this man ministered and said God said and God said and God said and this day we are here what's your name again? 
goodness, Alicia. Father, I just want to thank you so much for your daughter. I thank you that you have singled her out for this moment and this time. Speak your word. The word of God comes to you saying, daughter, it is not only for knowing and to understand and to spend time, but it's a process of taking you step by step and day by day. I stand at your side. I lay at your side. I hear your voice. All I desire of you is an obedience and a walk. God says that to just remind you, it is sufficient without exercising too much and working too much. It is to remind you this day that you are precious in my sight, that I love you. I still love you. And I will continue to love you as you love me in return, says the Spirit of the Lord to you. Hold on to what you have been taught in the past. Do not pursue what is new. But what was, let that be the foundation and the pillar that shall keep you, says the Lord. Do not go astray as many are the searching and searching. For what is necessary has been taught. Sufficiency of my word and my love for you, says God this day. And I remind you, did I not speak to you in the past? Have I not kept my word? Am I not a keeper of my word? Will I not keep it this day and the days to come? As long as you continue to work with me, says the Spirit of God. Hold on to what you have been taught. Do not pursue new avenues, new things that they are showing you that are not of me. But remain steadfast, fastened to who I am. For I have taught you and I will continue to do that. Go and be of good cheer, says the Spirit of God unto you. And unto your household, it shall be well, says God. Let there be songs of music. Let there be laughter. There are those who have spoken to you concerning their lives already. Join with me with my plans for them. Join with me. This is my word. For they first belong to me, says God. You are but my steward. So today, I reignite the word of the Lord unto you. And unto your household shall be precious. More precious than it has ever been. Sufficient to bring joy once more to your heart. In Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you. God bless you. Oh. One of the greatest desires that we have in our heart is to truly hear the voice of the Lord and to know that it is His voice. Many of you inside of the sanctuary truly want to know what the Lord has to say for you and to you. Many of you, if I ask who would like me to minister to you prophetically, perhaps 90% or more of the congregation will stand up. They want to know what is it that I need to do? What should I change? Should I take this job? Should I leave this company? Should I get married or not get married? Is he good enough? Is she good enough? Are they too fat? Are they too thin? Is he going to make life good for me? Everybody wants to know something, what the Lord has to say. I, as a, vo as a one used by the Lord, even as a voice, at times I want to hear, and as much as I hear the word of the Lord, there is something that happens inside of you when you hear the audible voice of the Lord to know that it's God talking to you. You want to. But let's go together in the book of John 10. The book of John 10. And Pastor, good morning to you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much. 
Oh, I'm outside and, and as much as I'm doing out there, there is nothing like home. Nothing like home. There are days when it has been hard. I have a particular friend I call, and that friend, she, she, um, is among four or five people I call, and just to get jokes, to laugh, because sometimes you park your car at the beach, and you just watch out in the waters, and you know God is there, but you miss home, you really do, and like I was saying to pastor this morning, I said, you are really funny, he said, am I, I just tell you the truth, you know? <laughs> But I, I really appreciate the friendship of, of those of you who continue to, to, to keep in touch with us because we do need that. I do need it. I have with, my, with me my son. He doesn't want this. He's here. Um, he's all the way up in the back. And if you get a camera, you'll see him up there. <laughs> right? He is up in the back. He is ducking his head. Yes? <laughs> Kaelin is here with us. He would be leaving us just now to go off to university abroad. Um, that being said, one of the greatest desires of our heart to hear the voice of God and to know that it is his voice that is speaking to us. And this morning, every single person, I promise you, you will hear the audible voice of the Lord. Every single person. Verse 1. John 10. Truly, Truly I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he go ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger, they simply will not follow but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This is the word of the Lord. Many of the believers, the saints, are starved for that intimate relationship. Many of us ask, how can we know? Why do we need to know or hear the voice of the Lord, if anything? Principally, there are two reasons. For a sense of reassurance, for a sense of direction. We need to know the voice of the Lord. Samuel heard the voice of God. But he didn't recognize it until he was instructed by Eli. He heard, but he didn't know. Gideon had a revelation of who God was. And he still doubted whether God was talking to him. He asked God to reconfirm, not once or twice, but three times. You are talking to me. So that even if you hear the voice of God... Sometimes you are not sure that this is God's voice. Many of us want to hear his voice for comfort. Some of us want to hear it for some sense of help. There is a lot of deception in the world today about what is God's voice and if God is really speaking. You don't have to go very far at all. I found it very hard in my life to understand how is it possible that somebody can actually tell me everything of my life, my past, and therefore would allow me to believe that he is equally going to be accurate about my future. And therefore that person must be a man of the Lord or a woman of God. They can tell us about the future. They can tell us about our family. They can tell us a lot of things. And we tend to believe today because of the anxieties, the troubles, the difficulties, we all want to know. We want to be sure. 
you have tried with one church, and in that church, you heard over and over, this is the place you ought to be. And this is the person you are supposed to be under. And this is the Lord's word. And then you will go somewhere else and you will hear somebody telling you the same thing. This is the church that you ought to be. And this is where you ought to be. God telling you the same word, two different churches, unless you can split yourself in two, is going to be very difficult. Either one is lying or both lying. But you hear these things so often. So many hurts and pain, so many troubles at times, that whatever comes to you, you would grab hold of it. As a matter of fact, it's so easy. And because there is so much a desire to know God's voice, that growing throughout the world is all forms of psychic and palm readers and everybody else because people need to know and there's a big market for that. Billions of dollars are being spent and billions of people go and billions of people in their ignorance believe that is God talking to them because the person was able to tell you that you were born. And the person was able to tell you you're going to die. <laughs> and, and above all of that, they're even able to tell you, you have a black car or a red car. And you don't even know whether or not they have a camera or whether they saw you driving or whether they live next to you. But immediately, wow, he is a man of God. That is God talking. We desire to hear the voice of God and to know the voice of God. How can we know that God is talking? And does God really want to talk? Do you know God talk plenty? And I'm not talking about the traditional way or the way that we have been taught of just the word of God. I'll come to that. And talking about dreams and vision. God wants to talk to you audibly. One on one. Every single day. Wow. Is that possible? Is that only left only for prophets and prophetess? He said, my sheep will know my voice. A stranger's voice they will not follow. So God wants you and me to hear his voice, not once every six months, once every year, but every single day. And he wants you to hear it from him one and one. He does not. It is not his desire. First and foremost, that you hear it from me as a prophet of God. He wants you to have that relationship with him one and one so that he can tell you and talk to you so that when I or anyone else come, it can be a confirmation that this is so. So God wants to talk to you. Moses, he said, to the, he said to the Moses, tell the people, come. I will talk to them. What did the people say? No, Moses, you go. No, pastor, you go. No, Jenny, you go. You spend time with the Lord. And then come and tell us what God says. That's not God's ultimate desire. He has made and put the prophet, the pastor, the evangelist, the teacher, etc. for us. But first and foremost, we are to have that one and one with him. And there is something that is growing in the world so much today of an over extraordinary dependency on something or someone else other than God one and one. And I tell you today, even as a voice, don't you just hear my voice and say I'm a prophet and I'm accurate and follow me. It will be foolishness for you to do that. Anyone hearing and saying, I am a prophet of God and I'm accurate and I'm accepted in this church and this is what he said. Follow the spirit of the Lord. What did Nathan say? Nathan said to David, David. David came to him and said, I want to build a sanctuary for God. I have this big place of, of Fellowship and love. I want something to build for him. Nathan said, whatever is in your heart, go and do it. It's a good thing to do. On his way going home, 
God said to Nathan, Hey, that's not my will and my desire, you know. It's not my plan. It's good, but that's not my plan. His hand has too much blood on it. As much as I love him and I call him my friend, his son will build me the temple. In as much as that man is accurate, he was wrong. Don't you hear my voice or any other person's voice without you going and test the spirit and hear God talking to you? I am here to tell you today, be careful of what you hear. There are many correct, accurate prophets that are accurately wrong equally. <laughs> By their fruits, you shall know them. I come prophesying to you, you don't know last night if I slept out. You don't know if I'm beating my wife. You don't know if I fell from grace. It's only when God reveals it. Then you hear, oh God, he used to do all of that. Pastor say, Cleveland, I'll beat you. <laughs> all of that? No, no, no. And the signs will be there, but sometimes our blinkers and discernment disappears. Today, I'm reminding you, as powerful as a man might be, he may have 20,000, 80,000 people in his church. He may have been prophesying. He may have program. He may have 10 branches. He may be called bishop, doctor, whatever he is called. At the end of the day, you need to know yourself and hear the voice of the Lord. How do we know? How do we come to understand when God is talking? One sure way of understanding if God is talking when he wants to talk to you is through prayer. Prayer. What is prayer? There are many definitions, but some say it's communication with God, one unto the other. Some say it's dialogue between God and people, especially his covenant partners. Watchman Nee says, it is none other than the act of the believer working together with God. We pray for healing. In the book of James, for sickness, call the elders. And they shall lay their hands, praying in faith. We pray for help. In the book of Exodus and Judges, pray for mercy. Samuel, confessing his sin, his household. Pray for wisdom, dedication of the temple by Solomon. Pray for miracles or deliverance. The woman's son, revived by Elijah, as he laid upon him. Prayer to know who to appoint to serve in the kingdom of God. Prayer to know if it's to go or to recover. I found this so amazing. To hear the voice of God. David's family, they were taken away. But yet, David went to the Lord and said, Lord, should I go after them to get back my family? Would I be successful or would I not? How many of us inside of this room if we lose our son or daughter, to be first go and ask, God, should I go for my son? Should I go for my daughter? Communication with him, one and another. To overcome temptation, you pray. The Bible said, keep alert and pray, otherwise temptation will overpower you in the book of Matthew. There are many reasons why we pray. And how we pray. My prayer life, most of you know me from on prayer on the radio. But my prayer life started in the church. Here, my development of prayer and hearing the voice of God came through prayer. When I came back from London many years ago, didn't know anything about church. I never grew up in a church environment as you would have heard. But we started prayer every Wednesday. My mother, my wife, myself, and probably a neighbor. In St. Paul Street side. And every Wednesday we would pray. And we would be singing away. Singing here, Johnny. We used to sing. <laughs> Worshipping. Loud songs. And then continuing to do that every week. And then I'm hearing these things inside of here. In my head. Never know about that. What is that about? Hearing these things. And it just keep on in my head. And I came to pastor and I told him, I said, I'm hearing these things. 
and so forth. And this was 20-something years there. He said to me, he said, um, he said, he said, when you hear it, um, pray. And then what you can do is also exercise it during that time of prayer. That's where I started. Hearing in the prayer session with the family in the midst of St. Paul Street with all the drugs and all that was going on inside of there, in the midst of everything in darkness, some people would say. But God started to talk, and he started to talk. And more and more I would go into prayer and love prayer and love prayer, love prayer. But the more you pray, is the more you and God doing something, whether it's in private, there in your bathroom, your shower. And listen, there is no correct posture for prayer. You can pray. And on your knees, you can pray bowing down. You can pray standing up. You can pray with your eyes open. You can pray with your eyes closed. Don't, tell some, don't let nobody tell you, you must pray by, by, by this way and you pray by that way. Listen, when you are in trouble, you need to pray. And you need God to answer. That's what is important. But through prayer and that time with them, what happens is that you start to hear and get a sense of what you need to do. And through his spirit, he speaks to you. But you give him that time to hear his voice. Christ taught us how to pray in his word. If we need to know what we need to do, not pray that prayer, but it's a structure. And we have been taught over and over over the years. Glorifying God, asking for forgiveness, mercy, and so forth. We know that. There are many instances we are told that when we pray, that we must pray in faith. We must be persistent. We must be broken. We must follow the spirit of the Lord. But all of that is a relationship so that you get a better sense. Now, don't sleep on me. I don't believe. My voice is one where you sleep. So anybody sleeping? And if I see you sleeping, don't bow your head now. I will tell that person, that person next to you, wearing whatever color, nudge him or her. Okay? Spirit of sleepiness, I break it in the name of Jesus. Not in the house of the Lord. As soon as we start talking prayer and communication, what happened? Your mind gone somewhere. Somebody is on Kalalu. Somebody is on Pelau. Somebody is down the road. That is what goes on. God not into that. I'm talking to your mind somewhere else. Always trying to break and hinder when prayer is there. They always tell you that the church will be... If I'm telling you I'm, going to, I'm here for this two weeks. I'm holding a conference at the high this entire week um, for the region. And I have my executives and so on flying in from Geneva and my colleagues all over the world, a big conference. Prime Minister is going to be coming and so forth. And you know what? If, if I have to come in the midst of that and come to here and say, guys, I will be here, I'll be praying, I'll be prophesying, um, talk to your brothers and sisters, bring your pictures, bring those who are not abroad, bring your husband, bring the sick one here, etc. This place will be filled. Real full. But let me say we're going to pray. Some of you, because of who I might be or who you think I am, and I might be closer to God, all are coming. <laughs> and I'm saying to you today, it is wrong. It is very wrong. Prayer is important. Find the time to pray and hear the voice of the Lord. It is through prayer that gradually and gradually for me, I'm able to understand more. God will tell you something. What you need to pray for. We know that it's important, but we don't do it often. Tuesday coming, you might see plenty of people now coming to prayer. Because that's how it works. As soon as you are reminded of prayerlessness, conviction comes. Whatever you're doing, suddenly you will come. Let a week go, two weeks go, three weeks go. Something has to be said about prayer again. There's always some distraction or disturbance for you to pray and hear the voice of the Lord. But that's the intimate part, to hear the voice of God. I'm reminding you again over and over, prayer is one way, an important way, to hear God's voice. But in prayer, the Lord said to tell you this. 
I'm very sure of this one. In prayer, prayer is two-way communication. So we start by prayer. Father, Lord, we want to thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Lord, thank you for this. Lord, we have this problem. You know this work. I have my problem with my boss. I don't want you to kill him. You say pray for our enemies, but don't let him continue in his foolishness. Um, you might not kill him, but immobilize him. Um, keep him there for a moment. Lord, come back the next day. You're finished. Next day, Lord, thank you. You're good. You're merciful. I love you. You're excellent. Oh, how strong you are. Um, Lord, yesterday I prayed for my boss. Um, you didn't immobilize him. Um, but today, you might change your mind. Immobilize him now. He continues to be foolish. He continues not to hear your word, etc. Next day, you go back. Lord, um, he's still not immobilized. Probably what you have to do is take the job from him. Take it from him. And you go and you go and you pray in this prayer to God. In none of that, and that's only about your boss. In none of that, you stop. We don't stop after uttering the words to hear God talk back to you. How many of us, be honest, after we pray and say all that we think God wants us to say, stop, we heard what prayers, communication with God. It's a dialogue. What you need tell us, it is a dialogue. It is God and his people having a conversation. How many of us, after uttering the words, Stop to hear now what God has to say in return. After you say all of that, allow the Spirit of the Lord to now say, stop praying about killing the man. <laughs> in your heart you want him dead, but you're only saying these words to me. I want you to pray about the world. I want you to pray about Israel. How many of us stop? Or even before praying, ask God what to pray for. Christ said, I do nothing other than what my father wants. You could sit down and pray as much as you want. If it is not God's will, you're wasting your time. But we have to practice waiting to hear God respond to us in return. How many of us do that as a frequent part of prayer, which is communication, the link between you and God to hear his voice? So after you say all of these things, Lord, so, 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 and Lord, so, 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 how many of us come and say, there's a lady in red, kind of, um, we're in red, kind of nodding off. Hit the person in red next to you, if they did, okay? Yes, how many of us, they're over and over and over, over and over and over, will be doing this where we sit back and we wait on the Lord? How many of us? Sit down and make it to hear either before or after we utter our words that he is speaking us. How many? And if you don't do it, you don't practice it, how do you expect to hear his voice? You have to practice. It is by practicing in the many years upon years that I have gone through that year time of prayer as head intercessor in the Family Focus Broadcasting Network at the time. When we go in there to pray, we have to sit down and wait a time. I have to prepare before I come. No way pastor come in here on a Tuesday, and just come and start up. That is out of the flesh. We'll talk about that. That is out of the flesh. You have to be at that place where you are able to hear the voice of the Lord. So in prayer, to hear the voice of the Lord, give some time before, give some time after to him. And the length of time, an ideal measurement, it is not scriptural, but the, the length of time you are taking to speak to the Lord about something when you're talking should be equivalent to the length of time that you will wait to hear from him. So if you're spending 25 minutes to talk and pray about you and your job and your family and your children and everything else, take the 25 minutes to wait to hear what he has to say. All he needs probably is one second to one minute. Yeah? But take some time to listen in return to hear the audible voice of the Lord. The Lord speaks. He does. And he likes to talk. And he, don't, he doesn't always like to talk through someone else for you. He wants to talk to you himself. And I'm saying to you, with all the prayer and everything else, and establishing and, and the importance of prayer, we need to wait and to hear the voice of the Lord. Now, in hearing the voice, there are 
three different voices that you can hear substantially. Now, I'm giving you this because Pastor taught me this. I don't know even if you remember it. Many, many years ago when I was here and all kind of thing, he said, there are three different voices and I'm teaching this this day. The voice of the devil, the voice of your own flesh, and the voice of the Lord. When we talk about the voice Let's hear, first of all, the voice of the devil. You want to hear, remember what this is all about, eh? Hearing the voice of the Lord and knowing it's the Lord speaking. Reading from the book of John. There's another person in purple closing their eyes. Okay? Now, normally when you're in the army, we tell you to run around. Yeah? Yeah? But the devil speaks and he sounds just like the Lord. The devil, the Bible tells you that in the book of 2 Corinthians that he did what? He himself transformed as an angel of light. And you might be thinking it's God talking to you, but it might be the devil talking. Adam and Eve, same as you, Eve was deceived. Because the devil spoke to her. She had a conversation. She was not like, she had it two ways. He talked, she talked back. He talked, she talked back. <laughs> Satan talks. And when he talks, he sounds everything. Like if it's the Lord talking to you. But what he always does when he talks to you, he never leads you, one, to the Lord. Never. Whenever that voice talking to you, if that voice talking to you doesn't lead you to the things of God according to scriptures, no matter how right it sounds, it is not of God. When that voice talks to you, it can be as compelling as whatever. The Bible tells us in the book of Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Satan with all powers, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception would be among those and given those to perish because they did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. Powerful signs, lying wonders. You remember Saul? Saul sought to hear the voice of the Lord over and over in the book of 1 Samuel after the Lord left him. The Philistines come in with David. He called all of Israel. He saw the, the voice of the Lord. The Lord left him. He didn't hear from the Lord. What did he do? He dressed up. He looked nothing like a king. And he go on and look for a witch. And it's the same witches he destroyed when he knew the Lord and he was walking with. But he gone by a witch to find out and to get direction. You know, many people in churches go by witches. You know how many pastors and priests and all kind of people go by all kind of seer people? You know how many? And it is true that they will tell you something, but they tell you something from something called familiar spirits. Familiar spirits. So you suddenly go on by a wishy wishy woman <laughs> who cannot see for themselves. It's amazing the people who are always telling you all these things and God and whatever it is and you look at them. They're in some dark corner. They, 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 they don't know their head from the foot. They can't see. They do, they're all over the place. And we going behind. I'm not telling you that you have to dress beautiful like me or look wonderful or all of like that. I'm not telling you that. Right? But I'm just telling you that by their fruits you shall know them. How could you go and then you can be deceived because he is the king of deception. Yes. He will let you believe with great wonders and signs. We read, was it Saul? Paul walking, talking 
And this young woman with the spirit of divination there, these men are the men, men and they have the Lord, and the men of the Lord. And she was talking, and she was talking the truth. And they turned around and said, get out from that woman. Afterwards, they're looking to persecute them because they say what? All the gains she was bringing to her, her bosses and so on, gone. Spirit gone. They will tell you. And then you have those who are given the gift, the prophetic anointing, but lost their way. Balaam type. Who once was in a place of the Lord. And you don't know that they fell from grace. You and I in spending time with the Lord. Hearing his voice. Running to him because he's a prophet. He could do and he has done this and all of that. That is not what God intended. I tell you as a prophet of God. It is wrong. I promise you you'll hear the voice of the Lord. This is the voice of the Lord. Don't run behind prophecy. You know, many times people come and say to me, Pastor, I have a dream. The dream went like this. You think, what do you think that means? Past, uh, Brother Cleveland, I was walking, I bounced my big toe. It was the left one. What do you think that means? It has people who come, um, the listener, I am not saying to despise prophecy. I'm not telling you that. I'm explaining to you the measure that is needed because it has been abused. It has gone to an extreme. And you are taught in order that you would not remain ignorant. Christ said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The devil will come. You have those who are gifted as ministers fall. Fall from grace. I mean, people with their natural common sense, God didn't take that from you. And you could be so persuaded that a man could tell you, listen, God tell me to sleep with your wife so that she would be anointed. And you, wife, God talk to the man of God, he does hear from God. What stupidness is that? God say, God said, I see something here. I see only U.S. dollars coming from somebody's pocket. And if you don't have U.S. the equivalent in TT dollars, he ain't tell you Euro, he ain't tell you Japanese yen, he ain't tell you Chinese, he ain't tell you none of that. All he's seeing is U.S. in there because he's from the United States. Now, mind you, God can tell somebody those things. Because God tell a man, a prophet, to get married to a prostitute. He tell a man to cook on dung. God can tell, but you see, that man has to have that relationship with the Lord to know this is what God wants. It's not based on any person out there coming. Measure the spirit of the man. If I, Cleveland, come here and telling you things, don't just run. Amen. When the prophet came and told me, he said, um, I didn't know anything about the Lord. Sat right there. Where Toya is sitting with my wife. Don't know any of the thing. Then he said, um, the Lord says, my brother, I see you on plane. Plane upon plane. I see you traveling from one country to another. Do you know that you are going to be in government? Do you know that you are going to be in the United Nations? Do you know that? And I said, wow. Me going out and run and leave my work and go to the United Nations. I must be a mad, stupid man. I don't know where his word comes from. If it is of God, it will be done. If it is of God, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it will be confirmed. If I need to make them kind of decision, I need to get counsel of two or three others. I'm running down that way. But God, in his fullness of time, did what he has to do. The man said some things inside there to this day, I don't know. That will be... It, I can't see it. Those of you who know, he said something about I to, to take a level of leadership, which I don't know is going to happen. Right? I'm already 50 years, close to 50 in a few months. Right? So look what the Lord has done. Yes? It doesn't, you don't just take up yourself and run. 
The devil could be talking familiar spirits. And I'm telling you, I could be as accurate as what? I could be bringing, bringing gold and I could be bringing rubies and I could be bringing shoes and I could be bringing clothes and I could be filling this and I could be doing that. Don't listen. I could be telling you that the Lord said, my sister, take a mortgage from your, from your thing and pay for that home that is inside of that place where there are blind people and deaf people. Spend all of that. That might be the Lord speaking, but you need to know that yourself. Yeah. Next thing you go and take a mortgage, you have five, eight children, they ain't going to school yet. I mean, eating, you have me drinking. There are things that God might be telling you, but you need to know for yourself. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I hope nobody here visiting know they might even call themselves a witch. They might even call themselves a devil. Because he comes as a counterfeit. The devil comes as a counterfeit, you know. If he, he, he replicates what is the real thing. That's what he does. He replicates what is the real thing. So therefore, he, the, listen to this. If I come now and I take out from my pocket, and, and because you believe I'm a man of God, and I give you, and I said, um, what's your name again, sir? Richard. I said, Richard, you might need it, but... According to the anointing of the Lord, um, here is a $1,000 Trinidad bill. Right? There are some people might say, Richard might say to me, a $1,000 Trinidad bill? You think I'm a fool or what? $1,000 Trinidad and no $1,000 bill? Right? <laughs> Again, your $1,000 bill. It must be foolishness. And he would probably reject it. But there are those who, I'm a man of God, here's a thousand dollars bill. Thank you, Lord, for sending the money for me. <laughs> Thank you. They're going down by high low. <laughs> With a thousand dollar bill. The blind out there say, you think it's Monopoly? <laughs> and you have your basket with all the goods. The man of God give me a thousand dollars. How dare you speak to the man of God? A curse will come upon you. <laughs> Foolishness. If you can't discern for yourself, it is wrong. The devil ain't going to come and give you no thousand dollar bill because it's recognizable. He'll come and give you a hundred dollar bill. That's what he would want to do. We need to be discerning of the things of God and don't allow ourselves to be so gullible and foolish. Man, come and tell you these things. God say, to give me this, buy my ticket for me to go abroad. And God said, I should not go economy class. <laughs> You're laughing, it's real, real thing, you know, out there. Can you imagine that? Lawyers, doctors, in Jim Jones, I say it over and over. It wasn't no prep that went down to Jim Jones, you know. It was lawyers. It was doctors, it was economists, it was bankers, it was all of these people who were deceived. The deception is so strong. And when pain hits you so much, the devil ponging at you, ponging at you, and ponging at you. And they're coming and they're praying and you ain't waiting to hear from God and you can't wait no more because time. You run down by the sea of man and the sea of woman because you want help. Like Saul did. You're going down there looking for help. You think God is going to honor that? And some people know they are doing it, but they do it and say, he will understand. You can't be sinning and then say, God will understand. That is foolishness. And if you have done those things, repent. If you have done those things, repent. You understand what I'm saying? Do not allow yourself to be betrayed by the devil. Look at time. The second voice that you will be hearing and can hear is the voice of yourself. Flesh. Based on our own philosophies and tradition, based on our mindsets, based on our culture and our history, based on our imaginations and our experiences, we can hear things and think it is God, but it is the flesh of the man. We read in the Bible, in the book of Luke 16 and 18, where 
even the prophets say he wished to die. Jonah and all. In the book of Jonah 4, eight, for himself. He said, I wish, prophesied and wish for himself to die. God was talking to him. Your self-pity can cause you to say some things and do some things. You know, in the natural, as a doctor, as a surgeon, they will not allow you as a surgeon to perform surgery on your own family member. They will not. It is illegal. Why? Because you can be so emotionally tied up in the person on that bed that your professional training and experience can be compromised. So that's why you give it to somebody else who is just doing a job. You see the body on top there, he has to do the surgery, he does what he has to do, and he does it there, and get it done. But if it is you, you might be doing that all at the time. And if it is your stepmother, take it out. <laughs> if it is your wife, depending on the kind of woman she is. <laughs> if it is your son like Kaylan, Talk to me, Lord. <laughs> Talk to me. But you are not allowed to perform surgery. Why? Because you can compromise. And that is what happened with ourselves. When we have a situation to make, we go there and we take it down in a big way. And we can make mistakes out of that. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, we might find a work. Two things working inside of us. When you want to do good, evil is right there. When you want to do right, right? When you want to do right, evil is there. Always two things fighting inside of you. And we don't war according to the world. It's that battle, especially in the mind. So you cannot afford. There is a voice that will come and say to you, go down there. Go down there tonight. Go down there tonight. He is up. He is waiting for you. Spend some time with him. Minister the word of the Lord together. Three o'clock in the morning, a.m. Minister. Don't let the lady stay there by herself. Minister together. Your flesh. Deceptive. Deceptive. Some of us have battled. Some of us write it up. On the, on the thing. Mind, go to sleep. Too much trouble. I want to rest. Lord, help me. Because it is a battle inside of there. But all of that, there is also the voice of the Lord. When God speaks, as we know, He speaks then through angels, He speaks through vision, He speaks through dreams. He speaks through symbols, a, a whisper. He speaks, he speak, he speak, he even spoke through a donkey. a donkey. If God wants to get your attention, there's nothing that will stop him. Whether it's coming as a whisper, whether it's coming as an earthquake, whether it's coming as a fire, whether it's coming as a gentle voice, he, if he wants to speak to you, he will speak to you. He speaks by his holy Spirit. He speaks by his word. And when the voice of God comes, at times it can come very gentle. At times it can come, come very harsh and corrective. It always comes, however, with a level inside of there where you know somehow he leads you to a place not for the flesh, not to glorify yourself, not for what you personally want, but what ultimately will bring glory to him. Sometimes the Lord, this is why Stephen was able to get stoned. Because he was at that place of fellowship with the Lord, that even on to death, the voice there, he was able to say, have mercy upon them. When God talking to you with the most trying of times, having practice, having gone and desiring, you know his voice. His voice comes through, and one of the things, these are some of the techniques that I have found you, I have, that has, have worked for me, to know that is the voice of the Lord. Worship. 
When I'm in a place of worship, it's easy. See, like how Palmer's playing the music there and she's going to glorify the name? I could just prophesy to everybody without stopping. Yes? It, 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 it's easy. Remember? Elisha asked her worshippers. That's scriptural. I didn't even know why it is something happening inside of there, a song of, of music. When I used to sit in the center there, the first time the worship starts, and they start with, I enter. Jenny, I'm making it? <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. So you go, I enter the holies of holies, and you start. And then it's trail, fill the temple. When I hear those things the first time, didn't know anything about it. I was in my prayer practicing, hearing, and so on. I stood in the middle there. And from the middle you hear, my people do not know me, says the Lord. Where I come from? Take off. Gone home. Gone down in my basement. Lord, what is that? What's going on? God and I, relationship talking, frightened. Next week, fear the Lord, says the Lord. Yeah? Third week, fourth week, man, kerchief in my pocket. As soon as they start with their worship, put that kerchief, full it in my mouth. <laughs> I full it in my mouth. I said, mm-mm. You use somebody else. I know I alone don't hear the voice of God. I show everybody inside here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, says the Lord. Take off, God home. God, you, you listen, I'm telling you things. And I say, God, why are you doing this to me? And it's always some correction. It is always some direction. I don't, I, please, Lord, I really don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. And this time I'm traveling. Whenever I travel, I have more time with the Lord. I'm in my room. All my friends who are traveling with me from the company, they're gone, who gone looking for a woman, who come back from all night club, who slept with whoever. And boy, Cleveland, taste different things. You're in different cultures. What's wrong with you? And you dare, and God come in and say, well done, my servant. And I am there before God, and we are there, and we are just before him over and over. And I mean, it just went on. Worship, and the songs of worship, as soon as it comes, something happened. And you know what I realized? Pastor again mentioned to me, he said, Cleveland, what happened is that possibly when you're in that atmosphere, it is like you're tuning in to a station, and that station is clear. So if you're tuning into 98.1, right, Nicole, around that time? When you're tuning in there and you're in that place where the signal is strong, you are able to reach heaven so much easier. But when I go all the way to Timbuktu and I'm trying to turn in, tune into 98, you get the little noises and the scratch and the kind of distractions. That is what happens. You understand what I mean? So the worship is easier for you to be in that place. And I'm not telling you to go and listen to Chante. Chan, 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 chan. I had been in a place where my former job where I am telling you, they had chanting, real chanting. A couple million dollars they paid, and people, big men and women chant, chant. Songs of worship. Be careful of the songs of worship that you listen to. Amen. Be very careful. So worship remains still. If you want to hear the voice of the Lord, give some time. You cannot hear the voice of the Lord at 5 to 7 when you have to leave at 7 o'clock. <laughs> and you have to get the children out of the house. It don't work so. You have to be still in his midst and give him some time. That's how you will hear. Give him some time. What I found also helpful in hearing the voice of God is dying daily. What is to die daily? Oh, good. Some things you just have to die to. You know, it has some people pass through that you just have to, oh, God. But it is God and God alone. 
You have to die to your flesh, die to your views, die to your opinion. It's not how you feel. You have to understand you are a temple, the temple of God. It's not yours. You are not your own. You have to die daily to it. This is work to hear, you know. It is, this is why some people say, Prophet, you go and tell me. This is why they go and visit these corner shops. This is why they want to meet you in the corridor. Or they want to ask you this. Because it takes time. And what is amazing, hear this, sir. Eh? This is from God. Hear this. God said. Thank you, God. Thank you. 24 hours in a day. We have six or eight hours probably to rest. We have close to about 18 to probably 16 hours of daytime. Of the 16 hours or 18 hours of daytime, we have about eight hours that we give to the world. Another four hours or so might be traveling back and forth and doing. We have about four hours in that world time of 18 hours. And yet, to give God that hour or half or quarter, we just don't do it. We don't. Because everything has become busy and the noises are wrong. And while I'm talking here, it is a reality that hearing the voice of the Lord, some of you want to hear and understanding and getting some ideas. I'm not saying this is prescriptive. I'm saying what has worked for me in hearing the voice of the Lord. Consider it a privilege in his presence. That's another thing that helps. When I come into God's presence, you know what a privilege it is that the Almighty God is working with you. You know what a privilege it is to, to just be there, somebody else somewhere in pain or trouble, somebody else crying out because of some amputation, some battle, some four-year-old child probably have to be placed under prostitution, some missing person is in some downstairs basement tied up for years, locked away, bound up, somebody about to jump your wall or to break in, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to do that. Don't be too stiff and, stiff and religious. Don't let, listen, don't be stiff, stiff, stiff and religious. God is not like that. Do you know God is funny and he gives jokes? You all know God gives jokes? I have a joke to give you from God. A man climbs to the top of Mount Sinai and gets close enough to talk to God. Looking up, he asks the Lord, God, what does a million years mean to you? The Lord replies, a million years? One minute. The man then asks, and what does a million dollars mean to you? The Lord replies, that's a penny, a cent. Then he asks, can I please have a cent? The Lord replies, in a minute. <laughs> you, God at times, you know I prophesied to some people and I remember God said to tell her, um, you know you make me laugh, the person say, really? Some things we do make God, it makes God laugh. And he, the amazing is, God knows before you know. He knows what you're going to do. He knows where you're going to do it. He knows you're going to respond. He knows everything forehand. He knows. And because he knows, so many things, some of them believe we can outsmart God. Paying tithes and offering. Um, I'll give God, I suppose, I gave you the 10%. You don't, I mean, you will understand. Oh, God, I have to buy books. God, you know, we're going on a little holidays. i always obedient. If I give you a 9% this time, you ain't going to kill me for 1%. You're a merciful and a loving God. <laughs> and God started to laugh. Then someone come, come across again and say, Lord, you know, I really need to, to um, I like that guy. 
And God said, why? And you ain't knowing you're hearing his voice. And he said, God, I mean, I've been waiting all these years. I've been faithful. And God said, well, why are you, why are you like? Because of that, I, I love him. Um, look at the man. I mean, there is man to put in house. <laughs> God said, I don't look at the outside appearance. Said, I don't mind, Lord, even if it's for a day. And God said, daughter. I said, God, oh God, you know you can change that afterwards. And they tried to, and God laughed at the situation. He ain't going to do it because it's inconsistent with his word. But you, because of flesh, might have heard him saying, well, okay, I understand. You have been faithful. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go and sleep. And, you know, you all can be intimate tonight. Um, I will understand. And come back and ask for forgiveness tomorrow. Peter lies from the depth of hell. But God laughs. He laughs, he even laughs at some people's calamity and their pains and their trouble. And when we pray and sometimes God said, I will not listen to your prayer because you continue to do the same foolishness and you do the foolish things. He said, if you do not even honor your wife, your prayer will be hindered. So today, what am I saying to you? I'm saying that if you be still and then hear this other part as I get ready to close here. God spoke to many of us before. And sometimes God said, why am I talking to you again? Why am I talking to you again? I talked to you once. I talked to you twice. I talked to you three times. And then gradually and gradually your hearing kind of subsides. Your spirit, the, the searing of it. Why? I talked to you once. I talked again, I'm screaming out, don't go, don't go, don't do, don't say, don't become, don't visit, don't put your foot in that house. Remove that bread from on top of there. Take that cross from on top of your Bible. Move from there. Don't, don't. And you walk in, hear some noise inside of your house and you take up the Bible and you have it in front of there and you're walking to see who it is. Real foolishness. I remember pastor talking about the, the afro, the man with the green afro. You all ever heard that one? <laughs> pastor, I remember that very early. Look, he laughing. <laughs> the green afro, I say people, ah, afro green. Some people, some foolish thing people do. To avoid a spirit from coming inside of your house, you take the bread and you put it probably over a door. And that bread stay there for days, months, years. Stinking is protection. The things start to get mold. And you believe that protecting you without knowing that there's a need for this thing inside of you and that relationship to hear the voice of the Lord. God talked to you many a time. Obey the voice of the Lord. If God tells you that this is to be done and you have to get confirmation and so forth, you do all of that before you go ahead. But you cannot... Oh, why would I talk to you again? I'm a parent. Jeremiah, stop it. Jeremiah, stop it. After I say stop once and twice, I get a piece of belt. <laughs> he probably watching on, what are, we, what are we doing now? Live stream. He probably love watching on live stream. I get a belt. I discipline him. You stop. When he come of age, Jeremiah, stop it. He ain't stop. Jeremiah, stop it. Come of age. Fine. You're going to pay the consequences. And he'll pay differently. This time, nobody giving you a belt. There are other kinds of consequences for lack of hearing. Saul lost his entire kingdom because he was disobedient. You know, many times God talked to us. You know, you tell somebody, you say, I give them, this is what the Lord's saying. We have this new thing called a word in the church. As I close. The word. Nothing is wrong, it's scriptural. But my measure for you today is be careful. We have gone to an extreme, on the extreme right of knowing and hearing the voice of God. What did I summarize today in telling you? I'm telling you that many of us design our heart to hear God's voice. God wants to talk to you. 
He talks through his word. He talks through his prophet. He talks through dreams and vision. He does all of that. But there is a part that most of us miss, and that is we do not give him sufficient time one-on-one -on -one in prayer to hear his voice. And if we do that, we would hear the audible voice of God. Our minds, our hearts will be trained sufficiently to hear. It is becoming too prevalent in the church, in the body, in the world, that somebody else has to come and tell you. And somebody else has to say, you should know for yourself. And if you don't know, go back to the Lord again. So what I want you to do Um, what I want you to do is first to just take a couple minutes, close your eyes. Have a conversation with the Lord. And because of time, don't have a very long conversation. You'll do that later. Have a short conversation with the Lord. Now we are doing something spiritually here that is real. Have that conversation with your father. With that conversation now, I want you now to be silent. Try to listen to his voice, what he's saying in return. So training you, you have to bring your mind to a level of stillness. Block out that noise. Just you and God. Just you and God. You are not talking. Remember, you are not talking. He is now talking. Don't be distracted by what you have to do later. Just focus on him talking and pouring into you. Start to wind down. Start to wind down. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, some of you, a couple of things would have happened. Some of you would have heard something. Some of you would have feel a level of release. Some of you would be reassured. Some of you are reminded. that relationship with him.
have relationship with him. Talk less and let him talk more. Talk less and let him talk more. There's a young man up there by the door in the cream. Yes, can you stand please? Yes, you. God just wants you to know, my brother, that time to get in ministry, time to serve fervently. Set your heart to the things of God and make a decision. He's calling you. He's calling you. Spend some more time with him. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. And be with her, says the Spirit of God unto you. There's a young man there in a blue shirt. Yes, could you stand please? The one there, yes. Begin again. Live again. God is a God of a second chance. A third chance. Walk in faithfulness says the Spirit of God unto you. Whatever you are doing or have done, get home. Love again. And serve the Lord with all your heart. There's a ministry that the devil wants to take and kill. But you are here. Don't forget who you serve. Don't forget. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. There's a lady with a... Mom, you are the, the third row from the last. And white and black. Yes, you. You just stood in there at the end. Yes. Hallelujah. God just said to tell you that there's a striving of the home and some young ones. Don't be overly concerned and anxious. So to let you know this day that he has already taken care of what is yet to come. My sister, stop worrying. You will be too ill. The devil is trying to wear you down overly worried and I see you doing I know you have your own work and your business and so forth it's a time to start recognizing and celebrating for yourself you have earned it for yourself start celebrating the fact of your work your labor doing too much outside there I'm concerned about your health very very concerned about your health especially your feet be careful okay be careful hallelujah very quickly young man this young man here the one in the middle yes young man he's your son okay I don't know this one young man you are uh, gradually more and more business is going to get into your hands. I see you doing a lot of travel back and forth. I see like you are going to be taking on some battle to carry on and be involved in the business um, for a generation yet to come, says the Spirit of the Lord. I see laughter and joy and shortly you're going to have um, what you call like a home um, family and you will enjoy tremendously. Remain faithful. Learn about the Lord in all your learning. Do you know God has given you a tremendous quick learning mind? I'm not talking about to be too theoretical or knowledgeable. I'm talking about learn in that relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But yes, this little girl is, are you a little girl? You look like a little girl. Um, yes, you there in the black and white. 
you look very young. I see you sitting with these people there. So I'm thinking of you very young. Forgive me if I'm wrong. How young are you? Nine. Okay. God has called you into arts. He has called you into worship. He has called you. I see you doing a lot of instruments and singing and dancing and theater and so forth. Um, loads of it. Art, says the Spirit of God. And you will also be an evangelist. You'll be going out to evangelize. Um, I see you in um, Ghana. Um, there's a place called Zimbabwe. In your lifetime, you will visit there, says the Spirit of God to you. An evangelist, it's like the singing nun. It's the evangelical nun. Okay? Be blessed in the name of the Lord. I want you to point your hands with me. Stand, please, as we pray. Um, Pastor, I just want to pray for one item for you. If you don't mind, yes. <laughs> I will do that after. Can you point your hands, please? Father, I just want to thank you so much for your son. I thank you for the commitment of his heart. Thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. He has remained steadfast to do your work. He said in his own mouth on many occasions, he is not perfect, but he seeks after perfection to bring glory to you. Today, as a family, as stewards, as members of this sheepfold, we point our hands and we stand in agreement with heaven above and we speak to this man sufficiency in strength sufficiency in courage and hope that you will bear him up to complete his work that he will not depart from this earth one moment short from what you have predestined for his life oh we decree and we declare in the name of jesus christ that everything that is not of god that stand in his path to be broken in jesus name we speak against the works of principalities and powers and rulers and every wicked thing not seen right now in Jesus' name that it must go because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of the Lord. We speak in Jesus' name. Jesus said, in my name, in my name all power, all authority is given and we join in the name of Jesus Christ. For the goodness and the mercy of God shall follow him. Oh, my brother, the word of the Lord said, peace I give to you. I bring peace to you. You know, there is a, it's, it's like, um, I'm seeing you kind of like stumbling. It's like you make a walk and it's like you, you, you what, they, what they call the balance is not too there. And like they, they, there's, and your mind um, I mean, not just the heaviness and the tiredness and the worry. There is, there is such an attack that you just, in this time, and, and God wants you to understand that this one, this is the word of the Lord. Wearing out the saint. This is a technique that you have to be mindful of, of the enemy, to wear you out at this time. And what you would do in a second is taking more like an hour to do because he is ponging and he is ponging. And he's ponging left, he's ponging right, he's ponging back, he's ponging front. Coming and coming and coming. But today, understand this. The peace of God is laid with you. As we, the servant of God, join in oneness and in agreement with heaven above. And with the throne room of grace, we declare that who we bless is surely blessed. And we speak blessing upon you. We speak blessing upon your life. We speak blessing in your going out. We speak blessing in your coming in. We speak blessing in all that you set your heart to do according to the will of God and for the glory of God. We speak blessing in the night time, in the morning time, in noon time. We declare that in the name of Jesus Christ that the window of heaven shall be opened and poured onto you to restore you, to revive you and cause you and let you to know again and again and again that the God that you serve is so sufficient 
to carry you forward for his glory and for his honor. Jenny, just let us just draw in lastly for you together. Please come. Yes. Oh, we should always pray for leadership. Always pray for leadership. I laugh so much because when I said, um, the Lord need to talk to you, can I pray for you? He said, say, what about Jenny too? <laughs> oh, join your hands again. Father, united they are. Not made by men. Not determined by anyone or anything but predestined, united as one. You have called them to serve as one. The two shall become one, and they are one. You know the love that they have for each other. You know their lack, you know their needs, you know their concern, you know their passion. Today, Lord, we count it a privilege as a family, as a body, in your holy sanctuary, here from heaven above, as we stand with you and say, Father, not only for unity that is unbreakable, but by the spirit of the living God that you would refresh their efforts in one accord. A two-string cord is far stronger than one. And one shall help the other, and the other shall help the other. And today we help them, and we encourage them when they go out to fight, we shall fight with them. Their enemies shall be your enemies. And we join in unity and oneness. Oh, Father, bless your daughter in a special way. You have called her into ministry. She has gone and she continues to lead and worship. You have called her to speak your word. You have called her even as a prophetess. I pray for the unction and in the fullness of time. I pray that a great revelation for this season and the season yet to come to be made known to all men and women. Oh, Father, I declare in no other name by the anointing that you have given to me that there shall be a coming forward as she has said and you know in the fullness of the time that God, two servants, call to serve you. There may be no one else, but they shall serve you as best as they know on the foundation of your word. Today we say your word shall be eliminated. It shall be like sweet manna unto them as they read, read and see. You know, as, as I'm talking here, my brother and sister, there is like, like the word of the scripture of the Lord and what is happening there. Um, if you see this light, it is, it is like a big word. It's like a big Bible that is open in front of you. And the words are coming up. And the words that are coming up letter by letter, alphabet by alphabet. And it's going up towards two of you. And it's going to your mouth like a funnel going out to your mouth. And it's bright. It's very, very bright. It's a shine. And the, and the word, and the, there is nothing under which this big book is, is, is on. But in the air, it is just in the air itself. It's very large. And there's a word and there's a change and a page that is turning. And each time it turns, the word comes up and it's just moving one by one, taken out from, from, from like a passage and it's going up to you, to your entire being and like you are reading the word and each time it comes up, there's a light there's a bright light, it's yellow, it's kind of white, it shines a lot and God said I'm filling up the well, says the Lord, I am filling up the well says the spirit of the living God my brother and sister is not walking or talking, but it's a life of the word that is inside of you. And God is just illuminating it. And the pages are turning. And each time you turn, and like, it's like your eyes read, but it is not going to your eyes. It's going to your mouth. And it's just bright. It's shining. It's like a torch coming up. And, and if you can see the image, it's just letters upon letters of each word. All coming and going inside of your being says the spirit of the Lord and it's because the word is coming and it's coming and it's becoming so precious become sweet inside of your being and you're falling down you rise up because of what you eat and what you drink and my brother and sister there's one that looks like an angel that closes the book and takes the book away and the Lord says it is sufficient for you for this time and this season.
to fill you. My peace be with you. I lay this day for God's glory and God's honor. God bless you richly in Jesus' wonderful name. Oh, Lord. Oh, thank you so much. You may have your seats. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Why don't we stand and close in chorus?
In John 17, Jesus in praying to the Father says, Father, glorify thou me. And the Father responded immediately and he says, I have glorified you and I will glorify you. The will that he would glorify Jesus, it is through his own people, you and me. Not just for us to sing glorify your name, but for his name to be glorified in our lives. We've heard about hearing from God. We want to understand that God is not going to tell us to do things that are contrary to his word. As we were in silence there before God, waiting to hear from God, as led on by the man of God. I must confess I was not listening to hear from God. For me, I was listening to hear from God for you. And I heard from God that there are some who will want to hear what they want to hear and it wouldn't be me that is speaking to them. Desire could be a very powerful voice within us. If we desire something, to do something, even if that something contravenes the word of God, we could hear a voice speaking to us and urging us on to continue in the thing that we are doing. So at all times when we are listening to hear the voice of God, make sure that the voice you hear doesn't say anything contrary to the word of God. God will not say anything contrary to his word. He says it, that he holds his word above his very name. So when you're listening, be careful that you're hearing the voice of God and not the voice of desire or the voice of the devil. Were you blessed this morning? Yes. I always try to bring to you a minister that can minister to us, one that I know walks uprightly before the Lord. It is always good for us to have different kinds of ministries. And this is why from time to time you will be hearing someone from outside, apart from the regulars that we hear. And we know that they are raised up by God for this purpose in this place. God bless you richly. You may be seated. And